Hello everyone and welcome to Elliott Wave Cafe. This is your host, The Cowboy, and welcome to another episode of the chart of the day. Today we're going to take a look at Lockheed Martin. This stock has been uh, in the news lately um, and it's been rallying pretty nicely here at about 448. So this is a big defense stock. And uh, you know, as you know, they make uh, airplanes and all kind of uh, armament and stuff like that. So um, let's just dive in and take a look and see how the count looks. And I have something interesting to show you because uh, there is a, a very nice formation back here that I want to discuss it with you a little bit. So let's get going. I want you to stop the video and try to see if you can maybe give me a count kind of starting from these lows back in here all the way to the highs and see kind of what you can come up with and then kind of compare it with mine as I'm going to start talking about it here in a second. All right, so let's jump over and take a look. So first of all, what I do see in here, I see a uh, uh, you know pretty strong consolidation right there right and then I see a nice correction here I see maybe another bigger correction here I see a very very long uh, uh, impulsive wave right there so just by looking at it it tells me that the move from this low to this high here at least to that high it's an impulsive move and then it makes one more high in another impulse in here. I mean, you can see one, two, three, four, five. So how can we go about this? And this is something that I do all the time is I kind of go backwards on charts. If I don't quickly understand what's going on and I kind of, you know, want to dissect it a little bit, I just kind of go backwards and just start to uh, break it into pieces, right? I mean, you know the saying, like, how do you eat an elephant? And that is like one bite at a time. So you go here and I take a uh, triangle because this is kind of how this looks and I go and I dive down in A, up in B, down in C, up in D and then down in E. So now, you know, I kind of have a triangle structure in there. It looks like the lines are converging, E is not below C, D is not above B, uh, you know, A is the longest wave in here and we're breaking out of the triangle. So this is interesting. Then I'm noting another correction in here and this could be A, B, C, X, ABC. Let's do this as a, and I don't even have to go inside, you know, looking at this thing here. I just, I'm just going to do a WXY and see kind of how that looks. So I'm going to go here and just bring the combination and just go, you know, WXY. And that's another correction, right? I mean, you can count it ABC if you want to. Uh, then I see something else in here that's kind of tricky. I mean, this move uh, goes lower below this, but it does look like this whole thing is part of one correction. And I'm going to go with another WXY in there as well. So I'm going to go in a combination here and go WXY. So you have an ABC in there, followed by an ABCX, and then another AB, and then down in C, for a wave Y. So this looks pretty good. Now, how can we make sense of this? Because the other thing that we have in here is we have another correction right there, right? And it does look like this correction in here matches this correction back there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider that the move started back here and it finished actually all the way up there, right? And I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go and then we'll see how it looks. So I'm going to go as an impulse in a wave one. This is an A up in B and then down in C. So that's a flat. It's a running flat. One, two. That's a three, four, and five. So there you go. We have created a fifth wave move. One, two, three, four, and five, followed by a triangle. What if this is a triangle um, and I have a third wave move in here in a completed sequence, that means that that's a two, right? And that's a fourth wave in a triangle. You have a nice guy out of alternation. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and count that as well. And I'm going to go here as an impulse. So I'm going to start from this low, go up here as a one, up in two. Then this whole move here is a three, four, and five. So let's just, let me make sure I secured that on there. And then I got to secure this back so it can change the automatically motivate software automatically changes the degrees, which is super cool. So now you have, let's say the cycle and I can, you know, let's, let's go lower than a cycle. Let's go as a degree. We move lower from cycle. Let's go to primary and then automatically everything moves into this is, this, this is intermediate, right? Automatically, whatever is below that it's intermediate. And then back in here, you have the minor degree, which is a WXY right in there. 
So you got intermediate, you got, uh, I mean, you got a, a primary, you got intermediate, and then you got the minor. So one, two, you can see it in here, one, two, three, four, and five. So that's a pretty nice clean impulse. And now if you want to continue to move lower, you can, and you can maybe go, fine, this was a wave one, two, three, big four, up in five, and this is a wave one of the lows. That's a wave two, right, right there. That's a larger three that just finished right now. And maybe Lockheed Martin is going to get into a larger four after this wave fifth is finished, right? Maybe he's going to do something like that where you're kind of going to go in a big triangle, you know, again, once this fifth wave finishes off and you're kind of pushing higher or it can continue to trend uh, after you're doing a fourth wave that could not be a triangle. It could be a zigzag. It could be a flat, whatever it wants to be. But here's the idea. The idea is this, that every time you're getting a move out of a triangle, what Elliott wave teaches us, the wave principle teaches us, is that this move in here, it's a terminal move. It's the final move in this entire sequence. One, two, three, four, and five. Because if you break out of a triangle, whatever comes next is the final move. Now, we don't know exactly where this is going to end up finishing, right? It's still trading at 448, 49. Uh, but you can do some calculations. I mean, you can look at this wave five and compare it with the wave one, right? And kind of see what that is. And for me... If you go 5v1, comes in about 493, so that's a decent target, you know, for a fifth wave, especially when wave 3 is extended like this. Because if you look at this third wave, I'm going to calculate it, it actually passed 423% uh, of wave 1. So that's a pretty big extended third wave. But you stopped somewhere near that level, right, which is pretty darn good target. So now, wave 5 is expected not to travel much more than wave 1. So this is kind of where you are here. Maybe 490 will be the target. And we'll go down to a two-day chart, kind of see how this looks. So we can take a look inside this triangle back in here. Sorry about that. So we can go right there, right? And then push this over. And that's that 423 that I've talked about. And here is the decline, A, B, C for a wave A, up in an A, B, C for a B, A, B, C, down for a C wave, up in... This is a little bit debatable here, this move, right? Because it almost looks like a five-way, but you could have an ABCX and another ABC for a D. So more of a complex correction in D wave. Then you drop down in this E wave, right? In an A, up in B, down in C, and then you're starting to rally. So this is a beautiful, beautiful triangle. And, um, you know, I think that people that are getting excited about Lockheed Martin up into these levels are going to get very surprised by this market. And even though it's going to push a little bit higher and get everybody long, I think there is a big, big sell-off coming to Lockheed Martin, you know, maybe towards the end of this year. If this move still continues higher and those 493, and it might take, let's say, a few more months to kind of complete that. But if you look in here, you can see one, two, one, two, three, four, five maybe another four and another squeeze up higher in five and you could be done. So this is kind of how I'm looking at it. So I'm going to go here. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, four, and five. So something like that. Right. And then this third wave, let's decompose that as well. Actually, I'm going to go here and go one, two, three, four, and five, with the exception that this wave one got a little bit screwed up. So right there, right? And then let me move the zero to just match everything else. So one, two, one, two, third of a third of a third, third of a third, right? That's the, that's the biggest of the biggest meat of this move in here. And then you're getting an extended fifth wave, right? And listen, if I'm wrong and this is a third wave at this degree and this third wave needs to move up there, that means that you're going to get in, instead of a one fourth and one fifth, you're going to get two wave fours, two wave fours, and then you know, uh, wave five and another two, two wave fives in there until you complete this larger move. Right. So this is kind of, uh, you know, what I think it's going to happen here. I'm going to save this up and we're going to revisit this in a few months and kind of see how, how this plays out overall. But this is, you know, a pretty interesting thing. Um, and I wanted to, you know, kind of show you how a triangle looks and how a larger structure develops and kind of how to count, uh, moving uh, backwards in account where you're looking for corrections first and then you're looking for impulses and you try to make sense and then you can make little adjustments if you don't like something right you know you might say well what if this wave one ended up there and and you know this wave two ended back here you know that's fine although this fourth wave becomes too large but you know 
less, it's fine. This is an impulsive move that clearly kind of terminated to a five wave uh, push right in there. And then you've gotten the big sell off, right? And that was a wave A, B, C, D, and E. And now you're doing the final move in five waves. So listen, guys, I hope this helped. I mean, I, this is why I'm doing this every single day. So I can, you know, get you familiar with the Elliott wave structures. And, uh, you know, I do this every day also in our pro room where we talk about Bitcoin and uh, cryptos and, and macro in general, oil and gold and all the other stuff. And, um, you know, we're, we're just kind of covering the markets and we're actually trading them actively every single day. And I, and I put trades out there for everybody to see. So with that being said, go ahead and give us a try. Don't forget to subscribe to this video and leave me a thumbs up, comments, what you think of this, what else you want to see, what we can look at next. And, um, you know, I appreciate you sticking with me and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.